Welcome back to DIY No Need to Cry with Ivelis. Seashell Wine Bottle Art DIY, Episode 4 Putting It All Together. Let's get started. Hi, my crafty fam. I hope you've enjoyed watching my creative process as I make this piece. And I hope you've been following along and making one of your own. Today we'll be adding the net, the shells, and all the bling to finish it off. Grab your net because that's what we'll be starting with. So, what I want to do is cover the areas that aren't as pretty with the net and leave the spots with the sea foam uncovered. Now, I didn't cover every spot because I want some of the regular color of the bottle to show as well. I just covered whatever I thought didn't look good. I also knew I wanted to wrap it a certain way around the bottle to achieve the look I was going for. Before gluing it down permanently, I played around with it to get an idea of where I wanted it. Once I was sure of how I wanted it, I started to glue it down. I placed very small amounts and pressed the net onto it. I also cut off any excess of the net along the way. Please be careful not to burn yourself when you do this. I really shouldn't be doing this with my bare hands. Please use something like a back of a brush or scissors as I finally did to press it down. Continue to do this until you've achieved the look you're going for. You ever wonder why it takes me so long to make a bottle? Look at how picky I am at the placement of this net. <laughs> and this is nothing. Wait until we get to the seashells. I am very particular and precise in where I place something. Paying attention to the smallest of detail will play a huge part in how the end piece will look. Now, for some people, this might take the fun out of it and it might not be for you. That's fine too. Everyone has their own way of crafting. However, this is actually fun for me. Trying to figure out exactly where I think it will look amazing and thinking two more steps ahead at what I would put on after is what I enjoy about crafting. It's like trying to solve a puzzle that hasn't even been made yet. I build it in my head as I go and make it come to life. You know that crafting zone I'm always telling you I'm in? That's what I'm talking about when I say that. I completely zone out from the world and the only thing I can see is my piece. Once you're done gluing down the net, it's time to start adding the seashells. I knew what shell I wanted at the very top of the bottle as I had bought it specifically for that. So I started with that one. I had already tinted it with the pearl white metallic paint and highlighted the raised parts with the gold. I used E6000 glue for this shell because it's big. I wanted to make sure it never fell off. I placed the glue in any of the parts that I thought would touch the bottle. Once you place it on the bottle, let it completely dry before continuing. My editor crashed on me while I was editing. Yeah, that happened. And after it was back up, I couldn't find the footage for this shell. What I did was use clear tacky glue and glued strips of the gold beaded chain onto it. I cut it to size and I laid them on the grooves of the shell all the way along it. For this one, we will be adding these pearls in different sizes on top of the shell. I'll be placing them as if they attach themselves onto the shell, the way barnacles do on underwater life. And again, 
I'm using the E6000 here, but I end up switching to the clear tacky glue that I think works way better in my opinion for aesthetic reasons, not the bond. I add a gold acrylic rhinestone to the center of the blue shell to complete the look. Now it's time to glue them onto the bottle. For this, I used my hot glue gun. Be careful not to use too much hot glue and clean up any excess. You want your piece to look nice and clean. From here on out, it was a couple of months. Yes, I said a couple of months of placing shells, pearls, beads, rhinestones, glitter, and sand until I finished the bottle. I didn't work on it 24-7. I worked on it slowly to make sure that whatever I placed was exactly what and where I wanted it. Now, I know I said I enjoy this part of it, where I have to figure things out, and I do. But, if I start to feel frustrated because I get stuck, I walk away. And not just for a few minutes, I walk away until I have regained my full positive mental energy to get back at it, however long that might be. Sometimes it takes me minutes, and sometimes it takes me days. What I'm saying is, take your time and enjoy the process and only work on it when you're in a good state of mind. If at any point you get stuck or start to get frustrated and feel like you're never gonna get it, walk away at that very moment and come back to it when you're fully refreshed. Everyone has different crafting techniques. Find what works for you. Heck, I've seen people throw a bunch of stuff together, throw paint over it, slap some highlight over that, seal it and it comes out looking absolutely amazing. You could try that and it might be easier for you. As long as you're having fun and getting the results you want, whichever technique and style you use is beside the point. Okay, so you can see how many different ways I've tried to go with one placement. I wasn't feeling it, so I moved to another spot. Sometimes that helps as well. Like right here, I was totally feeling this look. I was just trying to figure out what shell and color I wanted there. In the beginning, it's a lot easier to move to another spot as you have your whole piece to work with. But as you add more, it becomes tricky because of the limited space, colors, and angles you have to work with. I broke that part of the shell so it could fit better. If you have to do this, be careful not to break the whole shell. It didn't happen with this shell, but it did happen to me with others. And there you have it. 20 minutes after placing the bead, I finally placed the next shell. <laughs> oh, This continues on for days and months until I finally finish the bottle. I have so much footage, but I'll spare you the process and skip to each placement from here on out. I just wanted to show you that it's not that quick and easy for me either, so don't get down on yourself if you don't get it right away. I usually cut all that out for viewing purposes only. I like to decorate as I go. Here, I added a gold flatback gem and a pearl to fill in the gap. I'm still using the hot glue gun at this point, but shortly after this is when I start using the clear tacky glue and alternate between the two types of glues throughout the rest of the bottle. I wrap the gold beads around the gold rhinestone using clear tacky glue. You wanna measure, cut, and place it down. You can use a set of tweezers to make it easier. I also outlined the other gold gem.
Once I was done, I added smaller pearls around the bigger one, as I did with the other gold seashell. I used the clear tacky glue for this part. I dipped the back of the paintbrush in the glue to pick up the pearls. But I think it's time I invested in one of those rhinestone picker upper thingies. <laughs> this is pretty much the process all the way around, with the exception of different shells, colors, sizes, and placement of everything. And I eventually also start adding glitter and sand. Once I was done there, I let it dry before moving on. That's perfect, but I wanted to add glitter. I coated the inside with Mod Podge and added the blue glitter. I did the same thing to the inside of this shell, except I did it in gold and instead of using loose glitter, I used two layers of glitter glue over the metallic paint. I used the glitter glue instead of the loose glitter because I didn't like how chunky the loose gold one looked. And the glitter glue has very fine glitter in it. It was perfect for the top piece. Here is where I started filling in areas with glitter, rhinestones, and pearls. I did this so it wouldn't look so disconnected, so bare, and at the same time, it added a slight pop of shine and color that I thought it needed. I used a hot glue gun here, but again, I switched up to the clear tacky glue when doing this again in different spots. Here, I used the toothpick to get into that tight spot so that I was able to arrange the pearls. I only had the white pearls, so I decided I would dip several of each size into the blue paint and let them dry. I'll be using them throughout the design. Once it's dried, I seal it with hairspray. I seal it so the little crumbly bits don't fall. 
and I use hairspray because it works indoors, it dries faster, and you can't see it once it's dried. I also touched up any spots with more sand and added a hint of loose white glitter to it. I then added some of the loose glitter to the top and bottom of the shelves. This was one of my favorite parts of the bottle. Probably my least favorite part of the bottle. Actually, I hate it. <laughs> I wish I had put sand in there instead. I use a pair of scissors dedicated specifically to cutting things like this because it will ruin them. So if you do this, please don't use your good scissors. I really just need to go buy some more crafting supplies, but the struggle is real y'all. <laughs>
I decided I wanted gold sand for the bottom of the bottle. So I took some of the white sand and painted it with the gold paint as you see here. I then spread it out onto my silicone mat, sprinkled some of the white and gold glitters onto it, and let it completely dry. Once it's completely dry, it will be very stiff, and it clumps, so you'll have to loosen it up again. I then added a little more white sand for contrast. And lastly, I added these clusters of pearls to all the ends of the net to give it that final touch. And once that dried, I was finally done. And here it is, all finished. Woo! I know I made it, however, I don't always like what I make, but I absolutely love how this piece came out. And I know it's not for everyone. Not everyone's going to like it. It might be too busy for some, but it's exactly what I had envisioned. And that's all that matters. It's definitely going on my favorite shelf. Heck, it might just get a spot of its own. Just remember that when you're creating something, do it the way you want to do it. That's what makes yours a one of a kind, unique piece. Not everyone has the same taste and art is subjective. Whatever you see as beauty may not be beautiful to someone else. Hence the saying, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So get creative, let loose, and don't be afraid to try anything when you're crafting. Don't be held down by someone else's techniques, styles, or approaches to crafting. Do whatever feels right to you. Yes, we can learn and get ideas from each other. And yes, there are certain techniques that are pretty much by the book. Decoupage. But what I'm saying is that if you find it easier to do it another way to achieve the results you want or get the same results or better or even take it to the next level, go for it. I had an amazing time making this bottle and I hope you found this mini series helpful and fun. I've decided to mix it up and make mini series out of bottles that are more complex and regular videos with easier ones so everyone's happy. Remember that you can make it with the theme you want, any color you want, and use whatever materials you'd like. As always, have fun, be creative, and make a mess. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to thumbs it up as it helps the growth of the channel and to show your support. If you're new to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing to get updates on future videos. And remember, do it yourself. There's no need to cry.